Good morning, everyone. It's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. And here I am again this morning on my Craft Round the Clock segment. And I'm also streaming on my own page, Tinker's Cart Art. So it's it's um, 10 here, where, my time. So it's a morning segment this time. Thank you guys for popping in. And I'm pretty excited to paint with you again. So we're going to paint fall as we as I've been painting because I'm so into fall and Halloween right now. And I think that's uh, pretty timely. So I see you guys popping in. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it when you pop in and watch me paint. I hope that I can teach you a few, a few things. Um, uh, about painting and how simple it is and how easy it is to get started. I love teaching painting. I love teaching to absolute beginners. I will take you step by step. And uh, any questions, I'm going to have them on the comments here. Please shout out any questions, but I would love for you to say hello. Let me know that you're here. And I love to know where you're watching from. It's just very interesting to see people across the country and then people next door. So please say hello. I'm going to bring up the comments for you guys. And I would love to... Uh, answer any questions as we go. So I had purchased some little cutouts at Michael's a while ago, really chunky. They're kind of fun. They are, I, they were just, um, they were like $7.99, but see how wide and, and thick they are. They're wonderful. Hello from California. Thanks for watching. Hey, Tracy, good morning. Thank you again for always hosting me on the Craft Around the Clock um, site. I appreciate it and I do love it. So um, these little cutouts, we're gonna paint a little pumpkin this morning. Like I said, they're wide, so they stand. You could hang it, whatever you'd like. You could put them in a little display. Hey, Luann from Connecticut. Okay, I'm Massachusetts, so you're my neighbor to the south. You're not far at all. They had little bats, so I'm going to paint a fun little vampire face on him if we get a chance. And then I haven't even base coated the little kitty cat yet, but I have a thought, and I'm going to ask you guys your opinions um, as we go. So they're just little wooden cutouts. This is the wood as it comes. I wanted to get started and get a background on this pumpkin for you so I could start jumping right in and painting, but I am going to show you on the back how I got that background. It's very easy blended background. Morning, Cindy. And so you've probably seen me painting some pumpkin scenes and different things. I just finished this painting I want to show you, and it's kind of where the idea came from for this little piece. I just finished this scene. I had a little vision of doing some little gnome ghosts, and this is where this came from. So I just I've been into these vintage paper mache um, pumpkins and Halloween pieces that you you see from from like the mid century and, and they're really cool and sometimes creepy faces. So I've got my little man in the moon, um, which could be used in any painting. It doesn't have to be a, a Halloween. And then I've got my haunted house and I did gnome ghosts since I was on the gnome theme. Happened to have a piece of wood. Um, like I said, this is for my, I have an art membership. Uh, and that's um, for October. And I painted up last night when I recorded the class on a, just a board. It could be on canvas. It could be on anything. So thinking about what to do this morning, I've been wanting to paint this pumpkin uh, cutout. So I thought just simply an orangey background, sh uh, black shadow like of the haunted house. I just was on my other painting. And maybe just some pumpkins along the bottom. So I have uh, started to sketch on my design. I designed it just quickly on... Um, sketchbook. Once I develop these pieces, and if it's something that's going to go, of course, I make tracers and, and, and give those out in order to be able to paint them, but I don't expect you to have to really sketch it on. So good morning, Pat. Hey, Barbara. Thank you for watching. Um, Patty from Mass. Thank you. Any new people this morning? I see some new names and I see some old names. Um, and uh, I appreciate you being here. So let me get started and, and pull the cameras across so you can really see. You don't need to see me. You can see what I'm painting. So let's get that organized. And like I said, I'm going to paint this little piece. And then I will show you before we go how I did the background. I really want you to see what we're doing. So I'm going to bring the camera down a little bit. It'll be in my face. But as long as you can see what I'm doing. I painted the background. I'm going to show you how I did that, of course. And I did give it a little sand. I have like a sanding block or a fine piece of sandpaper. And you just sand it down. And that gives you a nice surface. The acrylic paint seals the wood and it gives you a nice surface to paint on. And I've sketched my design. It's going to be simple. Like I said, we're going to do a little haunted house in the background. What I'm going to do first, and I'm just using my acrylic paints. I just am using the craft paints. But I have to tell you, in some of the colors, the oranges and the yellows, I do like to use a tube. I like the uh, Liquitex acrylics. They do a box set of 48 of a lot of colors in this little size, which I love. And if you get a coupon for Joann's um, 
or Michael's, but I've gotten them at Joann's lately. Sometimes they have a 60% off coupon. I feel like I can't see you, even though I know you're, you can. Um, the concentrated color is, is helpful, especially in some of the yellows and oranges. So I have a little dab of yellow out there. It really does cover kind of nice. I'm going to pull the comments back again. I don't want to miss anything. Hello, Linda. Oh, and Gail. Hey, welcome. Hi, Sandy. Sandy's, like I said, some people are across the country and then some people are in the same town. Sandy's in my hometown, Clinton. Um, and Pat, thank you guys. Thank you for following. I love it. If you guys let your friends and uh, family and other painty people know if they want to learn to paint or get some new ideas, here I am. Um, so just my acrylic paints in a few Halloween colors, um, synthetic brushes. I'm a big proponent of use what you have to get started instead of worrying about having all of the right things. So just jump in and, and use what you have. And what I'm going to do first is just in the little windows, you can barely see the tracing, but my little haunted house has windows. I want to have them yellow and I want it to be bright. And if I tried to paint yellow on this orange background, it would take forever. So what we're going to do is just paint the windows in in white first. The windows in this little haunted house, because the haunted house is kind of wonky and whimsical and we're not worried about straight lines, even in the windows, we just want to paint our windows in white. Then when that dries and we add the yellow on top, it, it would be much brighter. Just saves a step. If there's a color you're using in acrylics, especially it's a little transparent, you can always base coat in white or add white to the paint and it will um, make it a little more opaque. So that's just a little trick there for you. Oh, Pat, you're in Canada. Thank you. You're my neighbor to the north. We're, I'm in Maine right now this morning. I'm heading home in a little bit. I love to be here up at the beach as much as I can. It is cooling off here. It was chilly this weekend, but uh, I love to be here. And then I'm off to Florida on Wednesday. I'm going down. Uh, my son's in Orlando, my sister, my brother, my nieces and nephews are all down that way. And we're going to do Halloween Horror Nights at Universal, which is one of my favorite things. Um, so uh, I'm in the Halloween spirit. Everyone else painting Halloween. What are you guys all painting? Let me know what you guys are painting. I'd love to hear and see. Post them on my page. I'd love to see what you're doing. Um, Sandy, I missed the beginning. Oh, I got them at Michael's. They're just little chunky cutouts. There was a, a bat and a cat. And remember, these are always recorded so you can catch up in the beginning too. I got them in Michael's a little bit earlier in the season. So I haven't been in lately. I'm not sure what they have, but... I'm thinking even on the cat cutout, I might paint a similar little scene. Doesn't really have to always be painted as a cat. So that's what I was going to wonder as we go along. Let me know if you think just painting the cat orange like this and then painting a little scene with a black cat, like on a pumpkin, maybe. That might be kind of cool. So that's just my little windows for now. Just base coated in there. Oh, I know. Um, how far are you from Maine, Pat? Because I know I have my neighbors here were, um, were from... Quebec, I believe, and they would travel down on the weekends, believe it or not. So some people can get down here. It's still a ride, but uh, I'm in southern Maine. I'm in Wells, but um, there's so many beautiful areas around the coast. So I'm going to have a little grouping of pumpkins down here. That is why I painted the bottom of the pumpkin sort of in a burnt sienna dark orange because I want a brighter pumpkin here. And then I'm just going to have a little black. It's going to be in shadow tree and some bats flying up above. I am going to... Um, Maybe I'll put my bats in now. If I paint them up here, I don't have to worry about putting my hand in, in the wet paint here when I paint the tree and everything. So little bats. These are little bats in the distance flying. It's not like we have to be very careful. How I paint a bat is I just paint the little body almost like a little U-shape. Can you see that's just like a little U-shape? Looks like a cat head almost. And then I just do little curved wings. And then I just do these little pointy bits. Fill it in. Some can be very tiny. I wanted to paint that one a little bigger just so you could kind of see what I was doing. I love bats. I know it's crazy, but uh, those big African fruit bats, I love this. So cool. And some just really literally have to be just like a little blob almost and then a little bit of a wing. So some are just flying in the background and they're going to appear and, and read as bats. And some are just going to be almost like the little V's that you would almost make for your little birds in the distance. So we've got some bats back there. The paint is drying pretty quickly for me so I can go and put my yellow in my windows now. Um, 
it pet spooky empire is that what you mean sounds fun it really is I, it was years my son goes he has a podcast about uh halloween horror nights um if anyone's a horror fan and beer he's got fear and beer is the name of his podcast and he talks about and you know they talk about waiting for horror nights and they talk horror movies and different things but he goes he's been going for years and uh, I was always a chicken. And then a couple of years ago, I went and it was so fun. It was not really anything to be really scared of. It was really fun in Quebec. No, it's not a bad drive. Um, like I said, I'm in Wells. I'm, I'm down south. But uh, I do love the coast of Maine. I love Maine anyway. But the coast, of just being, you know, I, I'm, I can't walk to the beach, but I can see it. So that's good enough for me. I'm just painting in yellow wind windows and I'm even painting the door in and I'll show you how I finished that off. So I painted it in. Look how much brighter that would be. If I tried to paint just that yellow paint on top of the orange, you look at you wouldn't even hardly see it. It's not nearly as bright. I sometimes take just a little dab of orange. Now, while those windows are wet, I could just pop in a little orange here and there. And I'm going to just paint the rest of the house just solid black. I'm just using a little round synthetic brush. I'm, I'm going to use this for most of my painting. I have a flat I will use for some of the shading on the ground area. But let's just go paint our haunted house in now, too. Hey, and again, thank you, guys. There's lots of you here watching in the morning. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, like I said, any questions, even if it's about painting in general and not about this piece, please um, feel free to ask. I do a lot of little short tutorials and some painting on my page my facebook page here i also have a youtube channel i'm not sure if it's in the comments or not i'll try to add it in the description if not but under the i'm a tinker's cart art is my my name everywhere so you, you could uh, find a lot of classes and some free things on my youtube channel and there's a link i think and if not i'll add it about my art membership is if there's if any interest it's kind of fun i have a couple different memberships and like I said, I love just teaching. I have perf absolute beginners, and then I have people who have been painting a long time. And we all have a blast painting together. So I just drew out this little haunted house. If this is something that you want to pattern for, I'll, I'll make a tracer from it, and you can uh, put it on almost anything. A little, just a, you find pumpkin shapes a lot, just the flat pumpkin shapes. You could add Put it on that you could put it on a little piece of slate tote bag i don't know if you saw me painting the canvas tote bags one day and if you are interested just um you can send me a message i'll also put up my texting number for a minute and you can always text me if you want to be on my texting list and what i do is a few minutes before i go live like this i'll just give you a heads up that i'm going on to paint it's also a way you can communicate with me questions and uh, you can always send me a message there if you want the tracer for this i can uh, make that and send that to you i just sketched it on but if you want a tracer that's fine so let me get this painted and then i'll put the number up um, if you want to be on the text list and it's just i'm painting carefully around the windows it's a little tedious but it's the best way to do it to get those bright windows because it's all black there's a lot of black on this little piece and to have those windows glowing is going to just bring your eye right there it'll be a nice um, point of interest for your eyes to look at and i'm keeping an eye on the time we usually do really well it's 45 minutes and uh, as you know on craft around the clock here you guys that are my group if you have not uh, checked it out please do crafting of all sorts all day long uh five days a week lots of times there's event on the weekend as well but every 45 minutes you've got somebody coming on doing a a cool craft and right now everybody's a lot of people are doing fall and be jumping into christmas pretty soon and you get some really good ideas and remember you could get ideas it doesn't have to be the exact thing that you're doing you don't have to paint this exact i'd love to see you take the different elements and incorporate them in in your own designs and paintings so keep an open mind when you're watching everybody and think how can i change this and make it my own that's always kind of cool there's our haunted house. We're going to put little window, uh, not really panes, but those little lines in. Again, I make them kind of wonky and crookedy on purpose. That makes it easier because we're not really trying to be perfect. And it's, like I said, a little wonky haunted house. So I'm just putting in these little lines, like I said, kind of leaning them, making them a little crookedy. 
and I'm going to do the windows and I'll do the little door. And I'm just putting the little lines in and then I'm going to put some across. And see how I'm making them really crooked on purpose. I love painting Christmas things and winter and snowmen, but I have to say Halloween's my favorite. I don't know uh, what you guys have some favorite seasons. I just, uh, I love the summer as the season, but I love painting the fall. In the little doorway, I'm going to just go in and I've got it like a little half, uh, an oval, half oval shape there. I'm going to go in and just make the door a little smaller than the doorway. And I'm going to just make, paint it down here. And the top I'm leaving as a little window. And so that's like a little window in the door. I need something for it to sit on. I think I'm just going to brush, dry brush, or brush on some black. So I'm taking my flat acrylic brush for that. I'm going to just really almost just, I'm going to take a little water on my brush. And I'm like you can see me, I'm trying to, I just wet the brush a bit. And then I pat it out on my paper towel to get rid of the extra water. I'm going to load just a little bit of black paint on the corner. And watch when I pat that out, how you get a little bit of a blend. And I'm going to go with the heavy side of the paint up. And I'm just going to give that house something to sit on. I'm just going to bring it down. It's very watery. It's a little lighter here. So now I'll just dry that brush off on my paper towel. And I'm going to go back and just sort of soften that paint out. This, this pumpkin's pretty rough textured. So I did give it a sand, but I'm not going to worry if it's not the perfectly smooth blend. And if the paint starts to dry, I wet my brush and I can kind of sort of still move that paint around. So I've just got a harsh uh, black line that I'm sort of just with water now, just with water, sort of softening that down so it's not just a harsh line. I may even take a little more of that brush on the corner and then just get a little another area here just maybe to set my tree on. Um, the pumpkins, I think I'll put a little uh, shadow under them. So it's just a very wet paintbrush with black on it. I go back with just clear water a little bit and soften that. And it's just going to give a little shadow. And I'll put some grasses maybe under there. But that just is going to sit my pumpkins down. And that's all we need to do. You could blend or finesse this as much as you want. It doesn't really need a lot of work. I kind of like it a little bit rough and just kind of... There, and my black tree is going to come up here. So let's put the tree in now. I'm trying to work top to bottom just to, to, so I'm not putting my hand in it. But um, that that with the paints uh, mixed with the water like that, it dries pretty quickly. So for the tree, you could go to a liner brush. I a lot of times will use a just my flat brush on the chisel edge to get the tree. I'm going to just go load that whole brush with black. And I'm going to start my tree down here. It's a tiny bit uh, wet, but I think I'll be all right. And I always start the trunk a little heavier at the bottom, so I might just kind of bring that, make a few little roots, say, so it could have almost some little craggly roots. Press the brush down a little more and then wiggle it up. And as I am, I'm lifting the brush off the surface so I get a thin line. So it's just a little pressure on the brush, lifting it. You could do it with your round. If you're more comfortable, you could just use your round brush same thing, press a little bit, wiggle it up. And as you're wiggling it, pull the brush right off the piece and you get a little fine line. And do keep your paint watered down when you're doing some little detail work like this. It really helps the paint flow. Good morning, Charlotte. Oh, I'm glad you found, found me. Um, and I'll see you tonight, hopefully, too, because we have a, a little uh, in my art membership, like I, I talked about, I do some a live painting every month with everyone. And then a tutorial tonight. And tonight's our tutorial on how to incorporate very simple figures into your paintings. And then we also have two recorded classes a month. Um, and then my other membership, which is sort of new, is just one recording every month. You get one whole painting sent to you every month and uh, really reasonably priced, like uh, less than a, you know, a couple cups of coffee. So I'm thinning my paint down good now because I'm going to do my branches. Same idea. I take the branches and I just press the brush down, wiggle it a little bit, and start pulling it up and right off the paper. And these little scraggly branches are really fun to do on creepy trees. I usually kind of go a little bit out and then up. And you can have branches crossing over one another. So now I am just going to make all those little creepy branches. 
I put a branch, I put some branches off it, a few little branches off that. And I'm honestly, my paint is thinned down so much it's like ink. I want it to be very thin. And I always just start with a little pressure and very light touch and thin down paint. So sometimes I know it's like hard and people say, I can't paint a thin line. Well, you can't if, the, if you don't have a brush that has a nice tip to begin with. If you have uh, paint too thick, and then just some practice. So it's a lot of other factors, not just, oh, I don't, I can't do that. I don't, I can't draw a straight line. I can't draw whatever. You just, uh, a little practice is all you need in the right tools. So there we are. I think it needs to be a little creepier and have some branches down here too. And yep, it's just too straight up. I'm going to do this. I want it to go a little out that way. Very simple so far. We've only used a few colors. There's our creepy tree. And, and sometimes if I was painting something a little more detailed, I would, of course, add some shading in my tree. This is just a simple little, and kind of, I like the idea of it being kind of spooky like that. You can always go back in. I'm looking at my, my, my line here. I want it to be a little blacker across the top there. I want to make the roots a little creepy. Let me just do this. You can even do the tree. Sometimes I make my tree with really whimsical kind of spiraled branches, which is kind of fun. Okay. And let's go jump into our pumpkins now because they're going to be fun to paint. And you could do maybe, maybe I would do a little black cat, you know, how they have the little Halloween cats. You could add a lot of things. You could add little gravestones back there, little dancing witches, all sorts of things. And um, let's get our pumpkins. So I'm going to just fill my pumpkins in now. Let's see, I wanna see what color will show up if I have to base coat them or anything. And uh, so see how that orange is very light. It's hard to see. I'm gonna just mix some white with it. So it's just gonna be a base. Now this is just a base. It's not gonna be that we're gonna have light orange pumpkins, but this is gonna be a base that's gonna help my colors be brighter afterwards. I love to change up the shape. So we're gonna have a tall pumpkin. We'll have a round pumpkin. We'll have one of those little squatty. I love those really squatty little pumpkins. But just as a base coat, I'm doing them this way first. Does anyone have any questions at all? Oh, hey, Catherine from Lakeland. Yes, I, I, did I tell you? I know I told you my brother's down there. Like He bought a place um, last week down there, the week before. And, uh, yeah, so I know right where you are. So we got a little tall one. Oh, actually, you know what? I like the little kind of heavy on the bottom, more of a kind of a triangular shape. And then this little squatty guy. So just throw on your pumpkins any which way, however you want to paint them. This paint is drying pretty quickly on this particular piece. You know how sometimes it takes forever. And I do have my, my hair dryer standing by um, just in case. I know it's no fun for you guys to just to watch paint dry. And also, I sketched on with a pencil because on this orange I could see it, but a, a good tip is just have a piece of chalk around. It's a great way to sketch ideas and see what you like because it's very easy to erase. So a piece of chalk is handy in your paint kit too. I know, Catherine, what's going on with the hurricane down there? I haven't been following. I'm flying down to Orlando on Wednesday and I should be looking. I haven't really looked. Oh, Debbie, I did it. Um, I'm going to show you on the back. So before we go, I'll show you on the back how I did that. I just used some oranges and I just painted them on wet and wet. So I'm going to paint these little pumpkins and then I'm going to turn it over and show you how I did that background. And I'm just going to, uh, actually, I will hit that with the dryer because I don't want to waste the time of just waiting for that to dry. So let me mute you guys. I don't want you to have to listen to this. And then I will dry this up pretty quick. Okay, now I'll get the orange on there, and you'll see it will be a little brighter for us now. And um, I'm just using a light orange that I have on my palette. You could certainly paint these in the different colors. You've seen me paint the pumpkins in the whites and the, and the teals and the blues and things. Um, this is on the orange tone, so I sometimes am careful about my palette and what colors I'm using. And this is going to be a little bit of just the oranges and yellows and black. I'm going to introduce a tiny bit of green for their stems and some grasses underneath, but um, I don't want to bring in any blues or, or anything into this particular painting. 
and I'm kind of doing them all the same. They're going to have different faces, but their bodies, bodies, they have pumpkins in early bodies, but you know what I mean. Hi, Cindy. Thank you. That is cute. I, I've had these for a little while. I've been meaning to paint them. I'm thinking I've got to get on it because I have to start Christmas stuff. You guys will be wanting to paint, you know, it'll be Halloween and you'll be wanting to paint these things already. So I figured I'd get these this little pumpkin done today. And I'm going to give that a little quick shoot of the hairdryer too again. So hang on one sec. And this is how I do my pumpkins, whether they're big ones or little ones, pretty much this way. I get the little ridges in them. I'm going to do it with the burnt sienna, which is that red brown. If you're working on them, you might want to do one at a time so that you can kind of blend wet and wet. I'm going to work on them kind of quickly, but I know uh, if the paint dries, it's a little harder to blend. But what I do is I just get in there and I get those little lines. I'm going to take a tad of black and get it a little darker, more so that you can see it too on your end. And I just get the little ridge lines in. So I painted it orange. I did the base coat with the white mix just because I'm painting on a darker background. If you were on a white or a light background, you would not need to base coat like that. And then just put those little ribs in. And now I'm gonna go back in with the, the brighter orange and some yellows. I'm just using that same little brush. If they're big, big pumpkins, just a bigger brush. Morning, Christine. I'm still in Maine. Yeah, I'm off to Florida Wednesday, but then I'll be back up Columbus Day weekend. Yeah. Hi, Annette. Good to see you guys. Thanks for saying hello. I appreciate it. All right, so I'm getting some brighter orange, and I'm going to dip into my Liquitex, the heavy bodies, with the orange and the yellow, because I do like the way I can blend in the coverage I get. So I'm going to go in between these little ribs with just a little brighter orange. I'm doing it kind of quick and thick so that I can get some yellow in there. If it was a bigger pumpkin, I'd have a lot more shading on the ribs. I would have make sure I've got them light in the middle and uh, highlighted. These are just little pumpkins. So I'll just do what I need to. I'm just putting in, that's just a thick little stripe almost of orange in the middle. I'm going to grab some of my yellow. I'm going to mix that in. And I'm going to go right up against or kind of even over a little bit those ribs because I want it to be obscured a little bit. I want it to be dark in the ridges, but I don't want it to be, you know, a harsh line. So that's where if it's wet and wet, I can usually blend those in. And I can go back and re-wet it and blend as well. But I do like putting a little yellow. See the little bits of yellow in there? Kind of nice. I will do a real a good highlight with some of that yellow and white. But right now it's just orange. And I'm stroking some yellow over it. It's The orange is still a little wet. That's why it's blending nicely. And like I said, I can go right up to and kind of over those ridges if I need to. I can even go back into that color and re-wet it if I want to have a little softer blend, too. I'm going to wash my brush off because I want to get some light uh, highlights more in the middle of the little ribs. And I'm just going to do that with the yellow I'm using and adding a little white to it. I like to go from dark to light when I paint with a lot of elements and objects. That way I can highlight and as I go, get it because you can see now when I get a bright highlight on the top, I put that on. It's a little bright. I don't mind it, but I'm going to just dry my brush off on my paper towel and just with the dry brush, just soften it. And you can use these colors to change them up a little bit. One could be more yellow. One could be more orange. I just like in the middle of the ribs and a lot of times on the edge of the pumpkins, pumpkins too, that they're a little brighter. Other, you can see now they're getting some form. They're looking a little rounder. And just going to finesse them a little bit and then we'll give them cute little faces. And little stems, I again start dark, dark green, and then I make them lighter. And, and that's going to dry, and I'm going to hit it with a highlight again too. Sometimes as the paint dries a bit, um, it just you lose the, the little pop of color that you put in. It just sort of blends. And then you just keep going back and layering it after it's dry. You can glaze and layer on your acrylics as much as, as you want. Catherine, I'm going to. Yeah, I will watch. I, um, I've had a little bit of ear out there, but I haven't talked to anyone down there yet. And, and my husband said that, yeah, I better check my flights and I will. 
what a, what a time, right? And and my I'm I'm flexible enough. It doesn't matter if I go down after that. So, anyways, but uh, all the best laid plans. I go back and forth almost once a month, so it's not a big deal. But uh, I will make sure before I head out. Thank you for the heads up. Um, Debbie, I use the, the Americana. I like the craft paints. Um, they're better coverage sometimes than some of the store brands, which I still use if I like the color. But I do like for some of the colors when I can the Liquitex. And like I said earlier, this little set of 48 um, is a great deal when you get a 60% off coupon for uh, Joann's. So that's what I use it on is getting this set of 48 colors. And then you find the colors you love. Like there's certain colors I don't even use. But when you find the colors you love, you could buy the bigger tube when you when you discover that. Okay, I'm going to put little stems on with just a dark, dark green. I like to make sometimes just little short stems. And sometimes I like to have fun and make like a curly stem. Just straight black. I start with my little round brush. I press a little bit so it's heavier, kind of like I did on the trees, and then just kind of bring it up and it gets a little thinner. And like I said, it's kind of fun to just have them trailing off sometimes. And all I do to finish that off is I'm going to put a little touch of lime green on there and uh, let that green dry. And I'm going to put just maybe a few little, uh, just to give them, so they're sitting because they have that little shadow. But in between and here and there, I might just go and do some little strokes of grass with that dark green. So what's going to pop on this is the light, green, the light uh, yellow windows and then some light little grasses we'll put up on, and little touches of lime green on their stems. And then for faces, now it's, a, it's kind of a haunty picture, a Halloween picture. We do want faces on them. But on some pictures, if it was just a fall scene, you might want to just have the pumpkins like that. And I'm going to just paint traditional little faces. I do all sorts of faces, but these guys, I'm going to go and just kind of do the little triangle bits and kind of have little craggly mouths. So just I'm going to do, um, I might do some round. Let's just see as we go. So sometimes I do my little pumpkins, just traditional, and then I just do this up and down little, you know, that little carved mouth that you get. Sometimes I give them a little round mouth so it looks like either they're singing or yelling so that's fun sometimes i'm just doing it in black paint right now now you also could very well use a paint marker for these details if you wanted to paint markers are great there's different brands and unlike a sharpie they actually have paint in the barrel i don't know if i have one handy here i probably don't you shake it up you can hear the the little paint mixing up and uh, it's great for details and things. So if you don't feel comfortable with some little details, certainly use the paint markers. And there's his little singing mouth. On the paint markers, though, be careful. Make sure your painting is super, super dry. If it's so much as damp and you touch it with that paint marker, then your marker seizes up. So you have to just be careful with those. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, hey, Barbara. Thank you. I'm having fun with it. And you guys are good because God only knows what these things would turn out like. I don't really plan a lot of times. I just say like 45 minutes before, what do I want to paint? What do I have? What do I want to, that's been sitting on my shelf? And I just did a little sketch and I used the inspiration from the painting I did yesterday, I showed you. Um, so really sometimes it might just be a flop. So we're, I'm happy that it's, I'm going to do kind of a, see how I brought the sides of that guy's mouth up. And this guy, I'm going to make it the opposite, like it's a frowny one. And uh, I'm going to put the triangle eyes. I would maybe outline them with a little, white or yellow or maybe white and then yellow on one side i don't know if i'll need it and i'm not going to worry about it yet because i want to show you how i got that background before we wrap up too so this guy oh he's got kind of a kind of a sad little thing and they look like a little too black they're very dark so i think what i will do once it dries is maybe dry brush a little yellow in there or something just so it's not like a black hole i want a little something um Oh, good. Yeah, Pat. Okay, so I'm not the only one flying by the seat of my pants all the time. I think it's really fun. Um, and it gets a lot of little odd projects done. Now, my other question is, what do you guys think? Should I paint the stem green or leave it as the as the, as the the background? I can't decide. I like it this way, but I don't know. So you can throw out your opinions there, too. But I think I may. Um, I think I may, instead of painting this just like a cat, which is kind of ordinary, I think I'm going to do the same background. Actually, I'll show you on the cat how I did the background. And then I'm going to paint like a scene like this with a black cat in the front. So I'm going to um, do my finish up this guy. So I'm taking the lime green paint. 
You can always mix too. Remember, you don't need all the colors. You can mix your uh, like a green and a yellow for that. And I'm just going to give them a little touch on the stems. If this was a bigger pumpkin and a bigger stem, I would make the little ribs of the stem, each a little line of this lime green. But this is just a tiny pumpkin. So I'm just going, say, on the on the right side, and I'm just giving it a little highlight of lime green. <laughs> Right? I know. And um, so the grasses, let's put a few grasses. And the little grasses are just sort of the same st strokes we were using. We just start a little heavier and pull. And just the lifting of that paint off the canvas is what's giving you the thin line. It's not like, oh, I'm so talented. I have, you know, can paint a really thin line. I have a good brush, of course. And then I just press and then lift it right off and thin your paint down. I had to add water again to my paint a little bit there. And I'm just throwing a few, I'm not worrying about where they are. I'm not lining them up with the dark grasses. I am just throwing them in. I'm going to put a dab of yellow um, in their eyes or orange. Just something to, I don't know, it just seems a little bit, they need a little something. Oh, actually, a little dab like that, that looks like an eye is perfect. I, think. I didn't plan on that, but it worked. So it's almost like just a little dab, which looks like a little eye. And it just keeps it from just looking like a blank stare. Like if you were painting any kind of a, animal or person you would of course have eyes and highlights in there and it brings them to life we don't want um little zombie looking i'm putting that little dot inside their noses too so that's all we really need like i said you could put gravestones here you could put uh little black cats whatnot i don't think we need anything else if you have any suggestions if anything else let me know but let me set this aside and show you how i got the background actually i'll set it here so you can see i sanded the cat um she's got some black paint on her just i don't know because i was probably touching with my painty hands so i just sanded it down make sure you get rid of all of the dust um charlotte i got these at michael's these little chunky cutouts they had them um earlier in the season i'm not sure i haven't been in a, in a little bit so i'm not sure if they have them still but you can find cutouts i know pumpkin shaped cutouts at lots of places so how I did this was um, I took out some shades of orange. I used my big one inch brush and I wanted to start darker, like I said, down here. So I started with burnt sienna at the bottom, which is that red brown. I started it darker down here because I wanted to paint pumpkins and I wanted it's orange on orange and I wanted them to show. So I, I just put on and I work sort of quickly so that this paint stays wet and I can blend it. So you could put it on a little heavier too. Um, if it's not budging, it's, I'm adding a little water because this is a little textured. Even though I sanded it, uh, the paint does sink into this raw wood. So I've got that. And then I just went to the darkest orange that I had. I put out a few shades and I went into the darkest. And can you see how that's really just almost blending by itself because that burnt sienna is wet. I'm putting it on pretty, pretty thick. And every now and then I'll just dry off my brush if I need to blend. And then I use just the dry brush to blend. And I'm going to just get lighter, lighter. I get lighter into the orange up here. It doesn't look that much lighter. So that's when I start grabbing some yellow. And it's still blending so easily because it's I'm working quickly. I'd rather have you work, jump in and work quickly and not have it be just right and go back and finesse it than to be really careful and slow. And then you're going to have more trouble. Your paint will be drying so fast and it'll be just frustrating. So I need to get a little more yellow out here. And then I'll show you, I did it this way and then I needed, it needed a little brightness. So I, I'm going to just go into my oranges and yellows and just go right up to the top. I did the edges, which was probably more work than the whole thing, trying to get all these little cut edges filled in with color. And I just got very light, got lighter at the top. You could almost use just the brush has a little orange on it, so if you just use yellow, it's going to mix for you. If you find it's too orange, that's when you can just dry it off on your paper, towel, or if you need the dry brush to blend. So there is how I started. And then it dried, and it looked a little, a little blah. I mean, that's perfectly fine. But I liked, um, I went back when that dried, and I just add, added more yellow on top because I wanted, the yellow was fading a bit. So, and actually this might even, this could, I could almost use a little yellow down here just if I wanted to just brighten it up too. A little bit of that yellow orange. So I let that dry and then I dry brushed more yellow on top. So, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just 
force it to dry a little bit with the hair dryer. So hang on, I'll mute you guys. We've got five whole minutes, so let's dry this up and I'll show you how to add a little more. Oh, and I never did put the texting phone number up. I'll do that now real quick. Um, thanks, Patty. Yeah, it's blending. It, I, I'm an oil painter originally, and in oil paint you can blend. It's so beautiful. But all the other aspects of the turpentine and the working and the drying, and I force my acrylics to act like oils paints a lot of times. And there's also mediums you can and add. But if you put your paint on a little heavy and wet and wet, you can get a good blend there. And there's my number. If you want to be on the list to be notified when I go to paint live or if I'm doing an event or any other little bits and pieces or for you to text me with questions or if you need a tracer for something or a different size tracer, um, I'm happy to, to do that. So um, this is pretty dry and it's fine. You could use it this way, right? I do see a little bit of the um, wood grain showing through, which you could have always based this with white if that bothered you, but I, I don't mind that. Hi, Rose. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, there. Yes, Debbie, you could add. There's, there's plenty of mediums and things, and I've never had to because I just I just force the acrylics and I, I I work a little fast. But those mediums are a great idea to give you some time to to learn um, the blending and everything. Um, so when it was dry, I wanted it a little brighter in a few spots. Can you see? It's a little brighter. I just took my brush and I did use my um, I did use my tubed acrylic for that because it seemed to cover better. The yellow craft paint seems to just disappear. So this is just a more pigment. And so if you want some spots that are merely yet more yellow, can you see that's just a little brighter? And I even, wherever you might want them, you can just blend that in just softly. I did it when it was dry because it just show up a little better. And actually it had dried and then I realized I needed to make it a little bit um, more uh, a little more yellow brace and then even if you took a little bit of white into that if you really wanted to have a spot where you just wanted it to be bright behind a tree or something you can go ahead and do that you can finesse that and and then I simply painted the edges like I said which is a pain in the neck um, but I uh, I do like the way it looked like just an orange pumpkin instead of painting the pumpkin as a pumpkin. I don't know what I'm going to do about this yet. I may or may not still um, do the green paint on there. And I, I didn't think we really would have time, but I had this ready just in case. And all I'm going to do is paint a little vampire face on him. So he would be kind of cute, I think, um, with fangs and little red lips. And then I might just, just highlight the, the, the uh, edges of the wings a little bit and, and maybe a little purple on there. We will see, but he's all base coated at least and ready. So here's our finished guy. I would put a polyurethane uh, on there, a, a water base. I use the Minwax Polycrill. Any water base, um, you could use a satin or a semi-gloss or whatever you like, but that will brighten this up a little bit. You could add some glitter if you wanted to. Um, that would be kind of cool too. So that was all based off of, and I showed you guys earlier, but if you want to see again, I did this painting for the membership yesterday. Oh, it's hard to see with that glare. He's got a little man on the moon and little gnome trick-or-treaters and little gnome ghosts. And so I am going to be doing that in October and I'll be starting some Christmas things too. So if you guys have anything you want to see painted for Christmas, please just let me know. And we are going to wrap up in a minute. So thank you again for painting with me. And I am here to answer any questions as we go or anytime. So just post anything you would like on my page and uh, I'll get back to you on that. You can message me. And I want you to know, even if you're a crafter, um, how easy painting can be too. So you can add some painting in there. And uh, and yeah, so I will, I will be back again next week. And again, don't know what I'll paint, but I'm always open to suggestions. I did actually... Did some really fun Santa gourds yesterday. And of course, they're in the car already. But you know those gourds you can paint and people paint them as pumpkins. And I painted the one um, with the pumpkin as with a party hat the other day. And you can find that on my page, the recording of that. And I'm going to paint the uh, more of Santa. So maybe we'll do that pretty soon coming up. But I, again, thank you guys for watching. It's so good to see people from all over, near and far. And um, 
and check out my page and check out Craft Around the Clock because right now at 1045, we have a new crafter coming. And so jump in and watch and I will talk to you soon. Thank you again.